Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for joining me. Welcome to another episode of uh, <laughs> The Green Tea Room. Brought to you by Tea Time Unfiltered. I hope everybody's doing good today. Um, I wanted to wait until we had more people in here. Um, we have quite a bit of people in here. It is going down right now on social media. If you guys do not know, I talked about this earlier on YouTube. Everybody's talking about this. This is global news right now. Bill Cosby has gotten out, and it is causing, I mean, the internet is shattering right now. It is so much debate. Some people are definitely Team Bill Cosby. Other people are not. It's so bad that Janet Hubert and Felicia Rashad are going back and forth on Twitter. I mean, it's gotten that crazy. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So um, let me go ahead and say something. I want to clear something up that I said during my um, podcast earlier because there seems to be like this debate um, when I was talking about him basically talking during the deposition and admitting to it, I wasn't speaking about him admitting to Andre. I think that's where the, the confusion was. He didn't admit to drugging her. He admitted to giving her drugs, but he had admitted to drugging other women. So I don't understand why people are acting like this just came out of thin air. It's in the deposition. You can also Google the case. Um, they have a breakdown of it on several websites. It's also on Wikipedia. But one of the things that was stated during the deposition, I'm gonna read that to you guys really quick here. And it states this, in the deposition, Cosby testified that he obtained quaaludes from gynecologist Leroy Amwar, who knew that Cosby had no intentions of taking the drugs himself. Cosby intended to give them to women he wanted to have sexual relations with and admitted that he had given the drugs to at least one woman and other people. Cosby admitted, knowing that it was illegal at the time, to dispense drugs to people. Um, Amwar, who later had his medical license revoked in California and New York, the judge ruled that releasing the sealed documents was justified by Bill Cosby's role as a public moralist, in contrast to his possible criminal private behavior. So that is what they use basically, um, you know, as a catalyst, one, to get the trial going, and then they use that against him. So he did admit to drugging women. It may not have been her specifically, but that is in the deposition that he did admit to that. But, and I believe the reason why he admitted to it because of, was because of that sweetheart deal where he thought that he could not be charged criminally. Because the whole time it was supposed to be a civil case. So I just wanted to make that clear in case it got mixed up. Because it was so much stuff that I had to break down in that podcast. So right now it's a lot going on. He's come out. He's speaking. Um, he went to Twitter. He was also, um, his lawyers were speaking for him when he got home. He didn't really say too much to the cameras. But he did release a tweet. And I will talk about that in just a second. Um, thank you, Minnie. Yeah, people don't. People are acting like folks just made this up. He has done some nefarious things, and I'm not going to sit here and just, you know, discount that because he got out on a technicality. I'm just not. So I want to go ahead and bring on Rejoice. Rejoice, feel free to um, unmute your microphone. I know hey, team. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. So how do you feel about everything, especially being that you're kind of young? What is the younger generation thinking about with all this Bill Cosby stuff? Because for us, you know, he was like America's father. Like we grew up watching him as kids. You know, he's kind of outside of your generation. So you just graduating from high school. How do you feel about this? I'm very conflicted. Like, I don't know what to really think about it because it's like, it's like, yeah, he did something really bad that we really can't, we can't give like a hard fact that yes, he did it only because he signed a plea deal to like just get, you know, and he can't be charged for it. What he did was so long ago 
can he really be, is he supposed to really be charged for it or not is what I'm really conflicted about. So you're more worried about like the statute of limitations because it's not anything recent. Yeah. Cause like, I understand. Cause it's like, okay, if it, if it was like for children, people would, wouldn't really care so much about the statute of lim. Well, they would push so hard on the statute of limitation to the fact where he wouldn't even be able to um, be tried for this and, you know, he wouldn't go to jail at all. But because um, these, it's a, a bunch of women cooperating this and it's someone who's powerful, it's like they were able to get him in jail for a little bit and then he can get out. But it's like, what if it was you know, if they were younger, would he even be tried for this at all? Is what I'm saying. Like, it's kind of double-sided with this. Mm-hmm. So, so you that's... think they're probably just making an example out of him? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Thank you for um, letting me know that. Let me go ahead. We have Lady J on the stage. Lady J, go ahead and unmute your mic. Hey. Good evening, everybody. How you guys doing? We're doing good. How about you? I'm okay. Um, hey, Joyce. I think she just muted her microphone. Oh, okay. hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> well, kind of to counter what you said, or even somewhat agree, because of our little bit of an age difference. Um, I grew up with watching Bill Cosby on the Cosby Show, you know, with Felicia Rashad and all of them, and he did. He was like the moral dad, you know, for a lot of us. But he also, for most of us who were paying attention growing up in the 80s and the 90s, later on realized he hung around with some really nefarious people. And the whole old adage, birds with feather flock together is real. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's real. Very, yeah. So that's one thing. But while Rejoice was talking, I did a little quick search and I went to the Daily Mail. And there was an article in the Daily Mail saying exclusive um, how Hugh Hefner is sued over claims he conspired with Bill Cosby to drug and sexually assault teenage dancer at Playboy Mansion in 2008. Now, riddle me why as a teenager at the Playboy Mansion, okay, whatever. Um, but the fact that, you know, I remember the last years of Hugh Hefner's life, they just kind of kept keeping it, you know, trying to, you know, act like nothing was happening, let him just his time to just time on out because, see, Hugh Hefner kept secrets. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Jeffrey Epstein kind of as an offshoot to this conversation to me was trying to give Hugh Hefner, you know, he just always looked like a man that was, you know, playing with other people's money, but he always tried to be Hugh. But that's just my thought on that. But Bill Cosby, guilty or innocent, this was a technicality, people like T. Say, read the document. Yeah. Read the yeah, document. it definitely was. It's not like, you know, like I said, there's. Proof in there because he it came. These are his own words that he did, you know, drug a woman and, you know, he did do quaaludes. And that was a big thing. That was a big thing, especially in that environment, being that we're talking about Hugh Hefner, um, the Playboy environment. That was a big thing in the 60s and 70s, because, you know, I think I think in today's time, you can kind of equate quaaludes to how people roll on ecstasy. It's kind of mm. equivalent to that is how they did it back then. You know, so it was very readily available. And remember, too, back in those days, you had a lot of Dr. Feelgoods. All through Hollywood, mm -hmm. all through Cali, where these doctors would be prescribing all types of medications that were not necessarily for their patients, but that they could give to other people. So the drug culture was really big. And that's what's so funny is like, as I got older and I really started researching a lot of this stuff because the man who he portrayed on television versus, you know, what he was out here doing in these streets was definitely totally different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. For sure. And, yeah, I definitely feel like the rabbit hole goes deep. You know, even just the connection with Epstein, with him living across the street from Epstein. Yeah, that's you know? very fishy. Birds of a feather. <laughs> you know, it's just a lot of stuff with this whole Hollywood situation. So let me go ahead. We have a lot of people raising their hand. Ooh, we got a full house. Okay. Hey. So let me go ahead. Um, this is going to be a long one today. Yeah. So just mute your eyes, Mike. I'm going to go ahead and bring on Aaron. Aaron, you're on stage. Go ahead and mute your mic. Unmute your mic. I don't know how. 
We can hear you. Oh, it's so unmuted? Yeah, we can hear you. How are you? Oh, <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. So what do you think about this whole Bill Cosby situation? First, I want to say what I think about your show. This is amazing. I'm so proud of you. Uh, this is really exciting. Um, as Thank far you. As, you're very welcome. Uh, the Bill Cosby situation, yes, has definitely been throwing me for a loop. I heard about it this morning, him getting out. And, I mean, I, I really wasn't sure when they would let him out. But I know they were in talks about him purchasing, uh, what was it, a news station or something crazy? NBC. Uh, yeah, NBC, you know. So, I mean, I, I really just feel like all of this was just because he was about to purchase NBC. You know, and I'm always going to feel like that. Anytime a black guy is about to do something great on some legacy. Same thing with Nipsey. He was about to tell the, the, the documentary on the uh, well, Dr. Sebi, you know. And so, I mean, call me a conspiracy theorist, but, you know, anytime I feel like anytime black people start getting too big and too successful, they want to go through our closet and try to find a skeleton, you know, in hopes to bring us down. I know a lot of these white folk done did it all, you know, um, it's just never going to get out, you know. So for me, I, I definitely love his work. Everything he did as far as work ethic is concerned. I don't really know about his personal life, whether or not that's true. Um, and I don't, I don't think anybody really does except for him and or maybe the victims. But I definitely feel as though it's the NBC thing, um, and and I'm okay. just loving the, I'm loving everyone's opinions and things like that. So I'm gonna keep listening. Thank you for letting me share. Definitely. Thank you so much for calling in. So let me go ahead and bring on some more people here. Um, let's see here, Jasmine Huggins. Jasmine, you're on the stage. Go ahead and unmute your microphone. What do you think about the whole Bill Cosby situation? Okay, so I disagree with that. It was a bunch of women that he drugged or, you know, had the scandal with. Mm -hmm. Like, I was talking to my husband about it earlier, and we were like, he was a big person back in the day. He was uh, portraying this good husband, uh, good father, and upstanding citizen. If this scandal of him doing drugs and having sex with these women on his wife came out, it had been, like, you know, really big. So I, my, my thinking is, why did they wait so long to do this? And, and the deposition that you read, it stated that he did, he, he admitted to drugging one person, like one woman, and giving it to other people. So that mm -hmm. other people, I think it could be anybody, like uh, a neighbor or something, you know. So I don't, I don't think that he was just out drugging a bunch of women, like or taking advantage of a bunch of women, like Epstein mm -hmm. and all these people, like Seven Heaven, who the guy from Seven Heaven who hurt children. That's who really needed to be in this situation. I feel, but okay. that's just my opinion. Oh yeah, I, I, I've drugged Stephen Collins over the years. You don't even hear nothing about him. Mm -hmm. Put that under the rug quickly. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much, sis, for calling in with your opinion. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You guys have a great night. I'm gonna, you know, get off. <laughs> okay, you too. Let me go ahead and bring on Ronald Harvey. Ronald, you're on the stage. Go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, how y'all doing this evening? We're doing good. How about you, Ronald? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So, yeah, um, once again, um, the whole one thing I'm looking into this whole thing with the Bill Cosby thing is the, um, I blame the prosecutors because of this. Because if you have a deposition that's supposed to have been sealed and put away, why are you using this in a court of, in the criminal case when he was told he was not? It's just pretty much like defying. Uh, his his deal and what he had uh, had going, so they pretty much were playing in. Um, you know, they was going down a slippery slope in the first place. Just him having this deal, them saying, "Okay, if you tell the truth, if you tell the truth, you know, or tell me what 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 actually happened, you know, we won't charge you with this." So he was like, "Okay, if that's the case, I'm going to do." Because what anybody in their right mind. It's going to tell exactly what they're going to do if they if they don't have like a safety net to know that you know I'm not going to go to jail because of this. Right. So why would he pull that off? You know. Yo, what's up? 
Hey, tea sippers, to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.